probably pre-surge, you might have seen a mile per hour or two more. Um, but I still think that's coming back. Otherwise, um, same. I mean, a strike thrower, uh, ground ball. Uh, I've always liked this change up. So it's, it's kind of the same version, maybe a click more on the gun. But I think as he continues to get well and stretched out, you're going to see it again. He's a really pitched in a meaningful game since like 2019. <clears throat> mm -hmm. A lot, but like I said, when you talk to him, he's so chill, man. He's just, um, he, I, in the dugout afterwards, I was like, very excited for him, and he's just very matter of fact, which I, I played along. Um, he just has that, that demeanor about him, which I absolutely love. Uh, the guy's well-versed, he knows himself, he stays within his uh, capabilities or his uh, circle that he believes in. He's just a very interesting fellow. So I'm getting to know him. Uh, but I really believe you're going to see what you saw tonight often, only that he's going to build upon it. <clears throat> I love that. He is absolutely an interesting fellow as the fans make their way outside the ballpark to join us. Very excited about this first Halos victory. But, Gooby, I loved hearing Madden talk about Noah Syndergaard during spring training, saying he can't help that he's that big and he's that size and he might be intimidating to some of the younger guys on the staff, but he is, and he's helpful, despite the fact that he is enormous in size. Yeah, I mean, and, and he's so, you know, cerebral, quiet. I mean, I always think of him as, like, you remember Mike Tyson when he used to talk? He used to talk real quiet, and then he gets out there and you know, boxes in the first-round knockout every single time. Noah Syndergaard, too, I mean, he's, he's quiet. He's, he's a thinker. He was out there using all his pitches. This changeup was outstanding today. He didn't have 99, 98 on his fastball. He did get 96, but that doesn't matter. His fastball had some movement. His sequence, back it up with his little sinker down, followed with the changeup. We showed that in the pregame show, the same exact plane with his changeup and fastball. That was so effective for him today. Yeah, Bobby, 76 pitches for Noah in his Halos debut. Very impressive, very efficient as the fans have joined us now in support. But that being said, as Joe was talking about pre-surgery, probably would have left him out there a little bit longer. But Matt Wise told me before the game today that tune-up, final tune-up leading into this one, it was a 10 out of 10, and he picked up right where he left off. I think it was just what the doctor ordered. You couldn't ask for anything more. Maybe a couple more hitters could have had it, but this is the first game in a long time. This is a first game with a short spring. This is a first game in the wing column for the good guys. So maybe he's not Thor anymore. Maybe he's Thor the stopper because that's what we need. <laughs> Man, this is the same team that had eight home runs in the first two games. Mm -hmm. And look what he did against them. Yeah. I mean, it's phenomenal what he did. His first time out in real action. He had that outing last year just through two innings of this fastball changeup. But he had everything working today and he kept himself under control. I don't, I mean, this the energy he brings, it's got to be, you, you showed him the other day, he's grounded. He, he's grounded going Liter out there. Literally and yes. figuratively, yes. he is grounded, yes. yeah. Holding that dangerous lineup to just two hits tonight. Alright, we've got much more to come on this post-game edition of Angels Live. Halo's in the win column. 2-0, your final score over the Astros. Stay with us right here on Valley Sports. Gooby to the post game show. The had... Herders French fries. Uh, <laughs> so later. Have to make it down. I know we talked about that the other night. We wanted the, the uh, McFlurry. Maybe we get some French fries. If that's the case. But Gooby, nice to see Trouty get that first one. He probably thinks he's going to have two or three by this point. Some of those bad luck outs close to the wall early on. <laughs> yeah, so, but that baseball was so crushed in center field. I'm thinking there's got to be some rocks that were actually broken up there in center field. But, you know, he just took a lot out of that swing. He said, you know what? I'm not going to allow anybody to try to bring any of that baseball's back. That ball was crushed in center field. But Trotty looks comfortable at the plate right now. I mean, he even hit a couple other balls hard. Just like Shoei, the last at bat Shoei you had. Finally hit a ball on the line. So we have Shoei getting its timing together with Trout right there right now. What a great game that was. We were talking about it on the pregame show. A pitching, you know, matchup, the hype sometimes doesn't always live up to it. It did today. That's it exactly did. what I was yeah. going to say, Bobby. The hype, it completely fit the bill for this one today. Justin Verlander just allows the solo home run. He was great, as was our guy, Noah Syndergaard. Great pitching matchup tonight. Yeah, great pitchers. And remember, both of them coming off of what Frank Job decided was a good operation that he did on Tommy John. <laughs> oh, yeah, Tommy John surgery, right? <laughs> yeah. And they're back after 600 days. They were excellent out on the, fit, on the mound. Very competitive, and I'm happy to see that they're both back and great for the Angels now to understand. They have a real pitcher. They have 
a real addition. That bullpen, yeah. you know, Tapura, that what's his fifth inning? Yeah. That's all year, spring I mean, trading. It's phenomenal. Here. Phenomenal stuff tonight. You're going to see Loop doing that all year because he did it last year. And to see Iglesias at the end, that could become a formula that we oh, really like to and, see. And the thing is, when you have Iglesias, only needs to get three outs. So we would see him get six outs last year. Because on time, he even came in with the base load, no outs, and got out of it. But you limit the amount of outs, it allows him to bounce back on back-to-back games or even back-to-back-to-back to Parra back to because there was talk about the Astros knowing when he was throwing a slider. So he made that adjustment. He's keeping his glove close to his body. His slider was really good. His splitter, same thing with his fastball. Real good to see. But Aaron Loop, just, I mean, he just loves the game. He He's really got a does. smile on his face. He just loves going out there and competing. It's fun. Those two go way back to their days in Toronto. So it's fun to see those guys going out there and competing. But going back, Bobby, like you said, to – Thor and Verlander, when you haven't pitched in that long, usually you think, okay, you're going to be a little bit out of whack. Your mechanics aren't going to be good. Their mechanics were flawless right away. I was surprised. They were under control. They weren't overthrowing. And it was just amazing to see how good they were, how many strikes they threw. Syndergaard, 12 ground ball outs. Yeah, they went mono y mono. Verlander goes five innings. Syndergaard goes five and a third. But really, Bobby, this was not a surprise if you watched Justin Verlander this spring. He was excellent in their spring training games, albeit a shortened one. Tough to consider. We haven't seen him pitch since July 24th of 2020. But again, they went pitch for pitch against each other. And, you know, we have to tip our hat that, you know, Mark benches 12, 12 ground ball outs. They were right at people. Yep. The defense was impeccable. Without the best ground ball fielder in the field, everybody made the plays that need to be made. Fletcher's on the bench, and Joe Madden pulled all the right strings tonight. Yeah, he did. I mean, you have Tyler Wade is short. You have Matt Duffy at second. You have a pitcher, you think, okay, he's going to be a, a strikeout type guy. But when you look what he did back in his last really solid season in 2019 when he was healthy, he hit a ground ball percentage of 48.5%. So you think, Wait a minute. He's, you think of him being a strikeout-only guy, but when there is contact, it's generally on the ground. And to have those guys make those plays on a consistent basis was really good to see. Well, it keeps the guys behind him engaged. Yep. They love it. And as you guys were talking about during the telecast as well, he's moving very quickly, so the guys behind him are very it was, engaged. It was funny because, <laughs> like, the last out of the inning was made, and as Shohei Otani or whatever was going back to the dugout, He's already out there on the mouth throwing his first pitch. I'm thinking, he is ready to go. So the guys in the field, you know how this is, is in fielders, when you're on your toes, you're going to make plays. When you're waiting back, guys take a long time in between pitches. There's going to be some mistakes here and there. And one of those things about time, I thought it was amazing that he got to, Thor got to the mound, ready to start the game. And then there was that two-minute delay. I don't yes. know what was going on. Because it was, a, it was a well, 07 start, and he was ah, like, oh, I he was love ready that. He was five. ready to go. I so love that. So now he's standing in the middle of the diamond <laughs> all by himself, six foot yeah. five, wanting to throw that first pitch he's been waiting to do for yeah. two years. Yeah. And they're saying, you got to wait a couple more minutes. Wanted to throw the hammer. And he threw a strike, yeah. and he had a great inning. Wanted to throw yeah, that throw hammer. hammer down. He did, he did. Wanted to throw that hammer down. All right, we have got... Much more to come in this post-game reaction.